Okay, so this is where we left off last time. We have uh, our information tiles that we have up on top in our info div, and we created those with HTML, and then we had a function to create this menu tile. So this larger div is called the menu div, and the menu tiles are also divs. Each one not only has its own image here, but it also has two other images associated with it. When, when I click on it, I'm going to see a, a tower appear and also that tower is going to have a bullet image associated with it. I'm going to add a little bit more functionality so when I roll over this it changes color, when I click on it it changes to another color, and when I roll the mouse off it'll change back to its original color. So all of those things are going on in just a moment. A couple of other things I wanted to mention, however, uh, this image in the background is not part of the canvas, and I forgot to mention that last time, but if we look back at our code we'll find out that um, first of all over here in the CSS we can see that I've got this uh, canvas div. Now that's an HTML element, it's not the canvas. I'm going to put the canvas inside of that div, and so it has its own background. It's mount.png. So we're going to change those images later on, but for right now, uh, I just wanted to have an image in there so that when we're looking at it, we can see that it does have some kind of artwork in it. And then the other thing I wanted to mention was that uh, when I am creating the tiles, when I create the canvas tower image or the canvas bullet image, these are the images that are going to go on the canvas. And when I create them, I don't want them to be seen. And so I've got this guy called this dot hide image element and hide image element is up here. So it just simply changes the style dot display to none. And so when I create these different kinds of images, remember every menu tile has three images associated with it. The only one I want to show up front is the actual image that's going to appear on the button. Uh, these other guys, I only want to uh, have them appear either when I click on a button and I'm going to have a tower appear on the canvas, or when the tower is shooting, I want this guy to appear on the canvas as the bullet. Okay, so now I want to create a callback or a function that's going to handle callbacks. And so right after I create these divs, I'm going to attach all my callbacks or my listeners to these buttons. And so to do this, I need a function. So uh, let's go ahead and, and say this is going to be uh, this dot uh, handle. Now let's say DOM callbacks. And I need to send in whatever it is I'm going to attach uh, these callbacks to, these listening uh, agents. And so I'll s put this guy right in here. And now this function is going to be called. And uh, when I call this function, I'm going to send it this. And I'm going to add a listener, actually four different types of listeners to each of my tiles. It's really important that this is happening either in the constructor or it's basically it's just happening once during the run of the program because if you do this, uh, let's say you put this in the animation loop and you keep adding callbacks and callbacks and callbacks to the same thing, that defeats the purpose and it'll make your code run really slow and I've had students do that more than once. So don't do that. Let's go ahead and move down here and we'll take a look. That was the uh, function that we created in the last video. And so now I want to go ahead and create this next guy, Handle DOM Callbacks, so let's write him. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and create this guy right in here. Now I've got this uh, Create Tile Divs Collapsed, but uh, I can go ahead and send this guy in right now, so this is going to be my function. And uh, I'm just going to put a little for loop in here. I need to, since I'm sending this guy, this dot tile divs, I need to go ahead and say, let's say this dot tiles. And uh, I'm going to create a for loop that's going to go through each of these in turn. So let's go ahead and create a for loop. And the for loop is simply going to go through each of the tiles. So I'm going to say uh, var i is equal to 0 and i is less than uh, tiles.length. And so, and then I need to uh, add or increment i. So just like in Java, actually, uh, this is almost identical syntax. But now I need to go ahead and add my callbacks onto each one of these. Okay, now remember that tiles is an array because I'm calling that guy from up here. I'm sending in uh, create tile divs created an array, it returned it here, so now this guy is an array, I'm passing this guy in as array, and so I'm receiving this guy in here, and so that is an array, and so if I simply come in here and say var mtd equals tiles i, this is going to create a local variable, I'm calling it mtd again, and tiles i is going to be the first element in that list when i is equal to zero, and every time I come through this loop I will be incremented, so I'll go from tile zero to tile one to tile two to tile three, and then when I get past tile four, this is no longer true, so I'll break out of this loop. Now I want to add my listeners. So the first guy I'm going to add is MTD add event listener. I, this is a mouse over, so when I go, uh, when I roll over this particular element with the mouse, I'm going to call this guy this dot tile rollover. And so I need to create that function 
just below. So what do I want to have happen when I roll over this guy? When I go mouse over, all I want to do is change the color. So let's put this guy right in here. So tile rollover, that's what I'm calling this guy. So tile rollover is a function and it says this dot style dot background color. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and give it this color. And so let's go ahead and just run this and see what this looks like. Okay, so now I've got these menu tiles and I've added a listener. So when I roll over the menu tile did we want it to change color. I think I chose a yellow color and there it is. Now notice when I roll off, it doesn't change. So each of these guys has a roll over, but it doesn't have a mouse out yet. So I'm going to add that. So I'm going to put that right here and uh, let's go ahead and do that. So that is mull out and now the style color is going to go back. I'm going to go ahead and save that. And now let's see how this works. Coming back in reload my page so now I roll in it turns yellow and I roll out it changes back roll over roll out over and out so that works let's go ahead and add uh, press now when I click on the mouse I want yet another color to appear okay so I'm going to go ahead and add that in down here and so this guy is going to be tile pressed so that's a function I have just written and this dot style background color is going to change to yet another color uh, oh, I don't have that callback, so let's go ahead and set that callback up here. And uh, the event in that your browser is going to underst uh, understand, I believe, is clicked. Let's see if that works. I think that's it. Let's go ahead and try that and see if I get yet another color when I click the mouse. So I'm going to reload the page. I have that rollover. Uh-oh, something's wrong now. Oh, no, that worked. So now I'm going to click on it, and nothing happens. Hmm, maybe it's not clicked. Let me check that. Okay, I did check and it's not clicked. It is click. So let's go ahead and save this guy. Let's go back and check it one more time. And this time when I reload the page, if I go roll over, it works nice. And if I click on it, it still doesn't work. Hmm, let's go ahead and just check that. We'll inspect this in the console and see what happens when I click it. I'm not getting any errors, but I'm not getting a color here. So let's come back. Okay, I can see what the problem is. I've got roll out and I've called this guy tile pressed. So let's go ahead and take this name, plug it in right here. So now I've got a different function call for mouse over, mouse out, and mouse pressed. And so now let's try it a third time and see what happens. And if I come in here, I can roll over, it works. And if I click on it, it changes color. So there's a click, it changes color roll off, roll back on. And so now that is all working very nicely. Okay, so something else I think I should mention is that uh, this is one way to uh, attach your event listener or your callback uh, to this particular item, which is a tile div. Uh, another way to write this might actually be more common is to take this entire function and I can just replace this second parameter with the function. And instead of giving it a name, I can just say function. So this is an anonymous function. And one of the cool things about JavaScript is that functions are first class citizens, so they can be passed as parameters. And uh, that's something you can't do, or at least in older versions of Java, you couldn't do it. I think the latest version of Java, they've got a workaround for that. But uh, it's always been, you know, just part of the root of uh, JavaScript has always been able to do this. And so uh, this makes for a little bit shorter code, and you might see that uh, if you're looking at example code on the web, you'll see this all the time. Okay, so now I'm going to add my fourth event listener to my menu tile div. I'm going to add all four of these to each of my five tile divs, and I've changed the name of this method to tile clicked, which is going to call this guy. And so I want to do a couple of things. When I click on the button, I want to create a tower, and I don't want to be able to click it over and over and over and keep making new towers. So I'm going to go ahead and paste this in. It says if tower game dot placing tower equals true, I'm just going to return. So this is not going to do anything beyond that. So it'll break right out of this function completely if I'm already placing a tower. Now I'm going to have to make this variable up on top, but it's uh, just a concept right now. And then I want to check to see, let's see if uh, I have some logic in here. For instance, I can check if the bank value is over 100. So this really is just uh, meaningless right now, but I want to be able to check to see if uh, I have enough funds or, or some other checks that I may want to put in here for logic later on. I'm going to say create tower. Uh, I'm going to pass in this and then a uh, tower game placing tower equals true. Okay, so something I wanted to mention here is that what does this refer to? Typically when I'm working inside of an object like this, all of these, this code, all of these uh, methods are being created inside of the uh, tower, the game 
the tower game, we'll call it a class, the tower game class. And so usually when I'm inside that class, uh, this refers to the tower game object. But since this is being called from a listener, that changes. So inside of, uh, anytime I go inside of a listener here and I call this method, this now refers to the object that I clicked on. In this case, it's going to be a menu tile div. So when I call the method create tower and I send this, I'm not sending an instance of tower game. I'm sending uh, the particular menu tile div that I clicked on. And so that's going to be really important because when I create a tower, I want to reach inside of that menu tile div and grab its cost and the, the two images that we are associated, that we associated with it back when we created the tile div. Remember when we created each of the menu tile divs, we assigned three images to each of those and I can get a hold of those based on whichever tile I click on becomes this. So I get those images, I get the cost, I get whatever else I need by just passing this in. So now let's go ahead and create this. I've got uh, create tower and I'm passing in this which is going to become a reference to my menu tile div and now I want to do a couple of things in here. The first thing I want to do is create a temporary variable for a tower. So I'll just call this guy tower and that's going to be equal to a new tower. Now I haven't written the tower class yet but uh, I will do that in just a few moments. And what I can place inside here, any parameters that I need to build this particular tower. So for instance, I could come in here and give it a cost. So this MTD, remember I pass in this, it comes in TD. So it has a cost, it has a image, and it has a, a tower image and a bullet image associated with it. And so each of these towers will have its own uh, images. And then I want to go ahead and push this into uh, my array of towers. So I will put a little if statement here and say if the tower exists. So I'll just simply say if tower. Um, so I won't get an error if the tower for whatever reason is doesn't exist. And uh, if it does exist, I'll go ahead and push it into my array. So this is going to be this dot towers. Now notice that since I'm in the tower game class, this refers to my tower game. And the tower game has a variable called this dot towers, and it is an array, so I can go ahead and push this guy in, and I'm just going to push in my variable tower. Now, of course, this isn't going to work because I don't have, it's not going to work yet, it will work in a little bit, but I've got to create this uh, tower constructor function, and I have not yet done that. Uh, I'll also say here, uh, else. Um, I'll just give myself if this for whatever reason didn't didn't work I can say print line or I'll just say log rather uh, log um, failed to create tower okay
And then ultimately what I'm going to want to do, my tower, uh, I want to do this every frame, but I'll want to create a function called uh, check enemies. I'm not going to write this for a while, but I'll go ahead and put this in uh, here. So check enemies is going to be another function. And so that's basically going to finish off my tower class. I just have to write the code for update render and check enemies. Okay, and I just realized we're going to need to know where this guy is located. And so I'm going to put in a vector. Notice I have new JS vector. I'm locating it at 0, 0. I'm calling this guy location. I think I'd actually prefer just to call it loc for short. And so I can locate this guy on the canvas. However, uh, what I need to do is uh, set up some listeners for the mouse on the canvas. And so when I'm moving the mouse on the canvas, uh, the location is just going to update to mouse X and mouse Y. But uh, in the meantime, uh, I do need these vectors. So I mentioned uh, in the first video that I put this guy called JS Vector, and I'm going to do a whole video on how to create this entire class with all of this method, with all the methods uh, in the vector. The important thing about vectors are that they are going to uh, allow me to not just have an X and Y location, but there's all the methods, so I'll be able to find the distance between two objects or the angle between them and so forth, all of these different uh, methods that I'm going to write in the JS Vector class. So doing games, if we're creating games, it's going to be really important to have a vector class, and we're going to build one from scratch in a future video. If you're interested in that, you can skip ahead and look for it. But right now, I need that to render my uh, tower at a particular location. And I realize this video is <clears throat> taking a little bit longer than I thought, so I'm going to go ahead and speed things up a little bit and finish this off. Uh, just to get this guy working, I'm going to go ahead and get a context. So tower game, remember, is a global variable, so it already has a context. Uh, I could pass the context or the, the game object itself in here as a parameter, and there's some advantages of doing that way, but for right now, let's just go ahead and grab our global variable, and now I use uh, context save and restore. And so the context object has, um, you know, its origin, for instance, is set in the upper left-hand corner, and I'm going to move the origin to the location of wherever this is, so this.x and this.y. Uh, so I save it uh, its settings. Then I'm going to go ahead and change the settings, and then down here I'm going to restore the settings. It's really important that save and restore are used uh, sort of parenthetically. They uh, serve as parentheses, and then I can translate, rotate, scale, uh, change all those things, and as long as I restore it when I'm done, uh, everything else in the game will work fine. So this is context rotate. Uh, I need a guy called uh, this dot angle, and so let's go ahead and set him up here. This dot tower angle, uh, and uh, set him equal to zero. And uh, I'm going to have this dot visible. And so when I first create this guy, I'll go ahead and say this dot visible is equal to false. So when I first create it, it doesn't exist. So if this dot visible. Uh, then I'm going to go ahead and draw this image. So at some point before I can actually see the tower appear, I want to make sure that uh, I set this dot visible to true. And then I'm just simply going to draw the image. And uh, notice the parameters for the image are, first of all, I have the tower image itself. Okay, so I think this video is long enough. Uh, in the next video, we'll actually get uh, the tower to appear on the canvas. So there's a number of things we have to do. I've got to add some listeners to the canvas itself, and then I've got to uh, deal with the logic of when to create a tower, when not to create a tower, and so forth. So there'll be a few steps involved in that, and I think I'll go ahead and end this video here and pick, uh, pick it up next time. So that's it for today. Bye-bye.